Hey there, and welcome to my channel. This is your host, Dancing Johari. A while back, it was early fall, my family and I went to the Renaissance Fair, and I decided to take some pictures with my mini Johari and some dolls, Lucy and, well, my celestial dragon. And, well, let's just say something happened and I couldn't, wasn't brave enough to show it in these pictures. <laughs> it was a cold day anyway, we ended up leaving early. To the workstation! As you can see, I lost all my eyelashes <laughs> by the end. Oh no. So let's give me my mini me another fresh face. <laughs> I figured you guys might want to watch the journey this time. First, taking 100% acetone, I took off all the factory paint, all the paint I had done. <laughs> and well, I wrapped her body up to protect her and put on some f a fresh layer of light ivory foundation. The idea is to try to match it to my actual skin tone as much as I can, but I have to admit, after Mr. Super Clear, it darkens up just enough that it doesn't look still quite right. I mean, this is me with a tan, honestly. <laughs> okay, once that's done, it's time, uh, and a couple of coats of Mr. Super Clear, it's time to blush the doll. So we start with uh, blushing over her eyes. Then I filled in her lips with a uh, watercolor pencil. As usual, materials will be listed in the comments in the description box below. And please feel free to make a comment. I love reading all of your comments, and I hope that you enjoy this journey with me. Uh, I go ahead and start with outlining the eyeliner and filling in the waterline a little bit with some pink watercolor pencil. And well. There's a good reason why I use watercolor pencils. Sometimes I make mistakes and sometimes water helps me to erase them a little bit faster. Oops, I didn't realize the doll was still wet. It came up a little darker than I wanted to for the initial pass. Uh oh. Back to square one. Try again. All right, that looks a little bit better. Actually a lot better. I also put in the eye folds, uh, draw in the eye folds above the eye. Just, it, ha it helps add a touch more realism. I am getting older and, well, I'm not going to draw in all the lines I've got on my face. Um, if you're wondering how old I am, I am in my 40s. My late 40s. I know, a lot of girls don't tell the truth about that, but I liked, I prefer to. I actually get a lot of comments on how I look. <laughs> And well, I took off the, the first pass of lipstick. <laughs> we'll try again here shortly. I also had to wipe off the other eye completely and... Oh. I don't know what it was, but this was just a really challenging art day for me <laughs> for some reason. I don't know if it was because I was doing this on camera and I was just nervous about showing how I do this for my... How I did this for my mini me to all of you, but you know... The very first mini me face up I ever gave this particular doll was with done mostly in acrylics, actually almost completely in acrylics. And I think I did a pretty good job considering that, you know, it was one of my very first customs back then. I go ahead and whiten up the white of the eyes with a white pencil after coloring in the blue irises. Let's try again on those lips. <laughs> okay. That's better. Keep a needed eraser handy to erase any mistakes. I go ahead and uh, put in the folds above the other eye and blush over the other eye again. <laughs> that all came off when I had to take off the last pass on that other eye. Using a watercolor pencil, I go ahead and draw in the eyebrows. And of course I used a mini eraser to help me refine the shape. Then I highlighted above the eyes with the watercolor pencil. Sorry about the angle here. I didn't realize I was sliding up as I was filming. <laughs> I think I also was a little too close on this one. I blushed the, uh, the cheeks, the chin, the nose, and decided that I didn't like the nose and the chin. <laughs> so I went over it with uh, my uh, shadow again and then 
reblushed on the cheeks and contoured around the edges of the face and under the cheeks. Highlighted the nose, contoured a little bit on the sides. Reblushed the chin with a slightly different color. <laughs> now it's time to add some more color to those eyes. After another coat of super, Mr. Super Clear, that is. But um, I'm having a really hard time building up any color. <sighs> the weather's changing, it's getting colder, and it's getting more challenging. So let's just switch to gouache <laughs> after another coat of Mr. Super Clear. So I got out my gouache uh, paints and my teeny tiny paint brushes. These are meant for nail art, by the way. I got them on Amazon. And well, you could tell when I was rushing because I kept making mistakes. <laughs> Oops. Thank goodness this stuff comes off with water. It's gouache, if you don't know what it is, is a watercolor type uh, paint, but it's it's not a solid cake. It's actually like a jelly. You can get it in tubes where I have it in like little containers that I got off also off of Amazon. I got a whole palette that way. I also darken up around the edges of the iris with a different shade of blue and start bringing more color and vibrancy into the irises. And well, the reason I use gouache is, unlike acrylic, it dries flat and you can reactivate it with water later if you don't put a sealant on it. So you can actually use it to blend. I love that about gouache. But when I get to a point where I really want to, where I really like the way something looks, I save it, wait for it to dry, and then I hit it with Mr. a coat of Mr. Super Clear just to save my progress, just like I would with my watercolor pencils. I darken up the eyeliner again. Oh, that's so much better. So much easier to keep her on camera a little bit. <laughs> Time for the other side. And while I have had thoughts about maybe making another mini-me that's a little bit, well, different. Like, a little bit more accurate to me. Like, for instance, I don't have hair that long. <laughs> I wish I did. I am growing it out, though. It's about past my shoulders, finally, after a couple years of growing. Well, it did take that quite, well, yeah, about two years to grow it back. I had buzzed it short a while back because I had literally fried my hair a little too much. All right, putting those lines back in, trying to get them to stand out with the watercolor pencil. Keep those pencils handy because sometimes they're great for highlights and just adding little details here and there. Just don't try to do it over the wet, the wet wash. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work out very well. I've done that by accident a couple times. Now I try to put in some more details with a different color blue, a lighter color of blue, maybe a little bit white as well. And that one side, I don't like how it came out, so I went ahead and went over it again with a darker blue just to solidify it again. Then carefully drew in the details again. Time for the iris, uh, for the pupils. I was going for a, kind of a belly dancer-ish expression in that I wanted it to be like a smoldering look. I was also trying to match the way the last face up looked as much as I could because I really liked how it did. But at the same time, I was also letting myself have a little bit of fun with it. Each time I do, each time I do a face up, I learn something new. Each time I do a face up, I figure out how to improve my art a little. I think that's the same of all, all customizers. The more you do, the more you learn, the, better you get. <laughs> I mean, look at these little delicate little eyelashes I put in. That's not, That was hard, man. <laughs> Wait till I do the other side. Uh, that doesn't look as delicate. Oops. Maybe if I lengthen it? No, those are clunky. <laughs> Let's try again. At this point, I did try to use just water to get this off, but it was kind of staining the uh, the vinyl of the doll's head a little bit. <laughs> and I accidentally got a little bit of red on the towel and on the chin, so I had to go and clean her up really quick in the bathroom with a little bit of soap and water. And, uh oh, those eyelashes are at a different angle. <sighs> Let's try again. <laughs> I wiped her off very carefully with a Q-tip and soapy water. 
uh, one more time and then gave it one last go and I liked how they came out this time. So let's move on to some other part so I don't mess it up. <laughs> There's just very something very soothing about working on a face up also. What's your favorite part of a doll customizers? Please let, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what your favorite part is. So for some people, it's the clothes. For some people, it's the hair. For me, honestly, it's the face. I love doing the face up. I still like making clothes too, but I mean, the face up is just the most relaxing for me. And it sometimes it can be nerve wracking. Like this one was nerve wracking for me. <laughs> As I said, I think it was because I was doing it on camera so you guys could see. Okay, let's try to get in those folds one more time. <laughs> Highlight the overlap. Nice. Highlight under the eyebrows again. It keeps darkening up, so maybe this time it'll stand out a little bit more. And let's put some little highlights in the eyelash in the eyebrows. A little bit of darker hair too. My eyebrows are actually just a little bit darker than this in some places and honestly other places have almost completely grayed out <laughs> my eyebrows so I have to draw over them sometimes and let's give the lips a little bit deeper red and if I was belly dancing I always almost always go with a really nice deep red lipstick but it depends sometimes I go with a blue or a fanciful color lipstick but it depends on what I'm what costume I'm wearing and what song I'm doing okay once all that's dry and it's been coated with Mr. Super Clear I go ahead and use some uh, Liquitex gloss varnish on her lips and eyes let's get her dressed before I put on the new eyelashes <laughs> So I'm going to put her back in my Renaissance costume because, well, this is like the Renaissance costume I actually wore this year. I wore my Gwazi coat. I'm getting ready to make a new one for, of those for myself anyway, I think, for performing. So that one may be getting retired to use for Ren Fairs, which would be fine. And of course, a chemise. Got to put on the shoes and for this out, for, for the Ren Fair, I'd uh, worn the curly-toed ones on my doll, but I actually wore flats. So. Uh, flat boots at the uh, Ren Fair. There's a lot of walking around. I couldn't do it all day in high heels. I don't know how some of those performers do it. Trying not to breathe, I put on the uh, three clumps, uh, three little bits of eyelashes, 3D lashes above her eyes. It's hard getting the angles just right sometimes. After those dries for a little bit, I add the second ones. The first, uh, I start at the corners and I slowly work my way in. There we go. There's all three on. And I love the angles. Wow. Now we just have to let it dry overnight. Remove the pins and... Oh, I feel so refreshed. It's amazing what a new face can do for you. Seriously, I wish I could really do my face uh, sometimes, but I think all of us wish it was as easy as it is in all customizing. I hope you all enjoyed this journey with me. Seriously, I really do. It's, it was definitely a little bit harder than I had originally anticipated. We have another doll coming up very soon, but it's coming up at the end of December. But until then, stay safe, have a beautiful fall, and bye!